Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Something that's been discussed a lot on this channel is the trans agenda and how we are pushing it towards people and, you know, trying to make people become transgender. There was this video that I saw on Reddit and it was about an Indiana woman blaming anime for turning her daughter trans. I mean, if you're at the point where you're blaming anime for turning your child trans, I don't know what to say to you. Hello everyone, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm going to come at this from a little bit different angle. That's what she said. Um, I'm, my name is Krishna Rosati. I'm just a parent. I'm not a librarian. Um, I don't work in a school system. I actually work in regulatory compliance and quality assurance for the pharmaceutical trial industry. That's a long ass fucking title. What does that even mean? But okay, so uh, originally when I was reviewing this video, I don't really know what this, it's like, I don't know, are they, they're in like a court or something, or I don't really know what's going on, but it says SB 17. So I looked up what SB 17 means. It's like a, it's a specific bill. I have a 27 year old son. So my experience is gonna be about him. Um, he, he was reared in church with morals and solid values. Our lives weren't always stable, but we did have a very close relationship. I married his stepfather when he was 14 years old. We had so many laughs and we were all very close. We enjoyed spending time together and my husband and my son had shared interests. So they became very close. Following is my story of how these relationships were destroyed and I believe the reason is the exposure and influence of books that he discovered at school. In middle school, my son became interested in something called ma manga and anime. Manga is a term for Japanese comics, and anime is a term for Japanese animation. That's like the saddest fucking way that you could ever deliver that fucking line. My son became interested in manga. <laughs> As a parent, I took those terms to mean typical comic books and animated series. I ignorantly trusted that these things would be benign and inconsequential since they came from this school. This is like, okay, you know how those people, you know how there's like people like who want to like change history to teach their kids it? I remember being taught history in school. That shit was brutal as fuck. You can't hide things for long because when you become an adult and you look things up on the internet, you find them out. I should have been more involved and observant. However, I can strongly say that he never exhibited any characteristics of being gay. The characters in both anime and manga are androgynous and they generally push an LGBTQ agenda. Okay, so like at the same time, let's just say, let's just say you have an androgynous anime. Watching one androgynous anime series isn't going to turn somebody trans. Watching several of those is not going to make somebody trans because a lot of us grew up seeing the same things like seeing straight people and seeing man and woman and seeing like men being men and women being women and you can't do anything about that. Like a lot, we have all seen that growing up and that didn't make us stay the way that we should have been. And they also contain a lot of sexual content. I'm saying that on a general level, there are exceptions, of course. I need my anime watchers to step up. Is it always about androgynous people? And is there a lot of sex in it? Over time, I came to learn that these genres are part of a subculture. My son became involved in that subculture. He became depressed over time. And when he was in high school, he started cutting. I think the cutting stopped at the point when I confronted it, but then he emotionally and intellectually regressed. Okay, so to me, that sounds like a lot more than blaming anime. You can't blame anime for all of that at all. That doesn't even make any, that doesn't even make any sense. He became interested in Gen Con and cosplay. He started watching My Little Ponies and he became a brony, which if you don't know, I learned later, is a subculture of older males who like the My Little Pony series. I don't know, this woman who just walked in, imagine you just walk into like a serious setting and she, <laughs> talking about My Little Pony. I mean, being interested in My Little Pony still has nothing to do with being trans. Some people are just interested in it. As much as I like to talk to you guys about useless information, today I want to talk to you about something useful which is Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from underneath the radar brands. And it's free to join. So every month they introduce their members to cool new products. And that can range from outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. 
Every box is around $70 in retail value, but costs only $49, based on a preference quiz that you take online. And their box lineup is changing constantly every single month. So one of the items I got was this duffel bag, and it was from the Weekender box. I've been wanting a duffel bag forever, so I'm really excited about this one, because also, look at the color of it. That shit is beautiful. It's really sturdy and it's also really big so it can fit a lot in it. Another box I got was the block kit which contained this metallic knife block and it holds your knives. I only have two matching knives so far but I wanted to show you how easy it holds so you can just take it off put it back on. And this can hold a lot more than two knives, by the way, if you couldn't tell, but it's really fun to put my knives away now, though. I never thought that I'd be excited to put my utensils away, but putting my knives on this block has been an experience for me. So what happens is you get a box assigned to you, you get to preview what's inside, and if you don't like what's inside, you can swap it out for another box, or you can just skip that box entirely. So to get 20% off of your first box today, you can go to the link in the description or use code SAMCOLLINS20 and get that 20% off of your first box. He became a collector of toy figures. He became more introverted and only interacted with others who were also into these things. And then he married in 2015 at age 21, and his wife was also deeply into this subculture. In April of 2021, he texted me in the middle of the night to inform me that he was taking hormones. I was devastated. Not only am I morally and scientifically against this. How can you be scientifically against transgender people? I don't know, if you stand there and say that you're morally against somebody transitioning, I just think that you're an idiot. But I also had to grieve the loss of the son I had known. I realized that I will never have grandchildren. And my family legacy is now dead since he's my only child. When I hear that, that sounds selfish as fuck to me. So you had your kid, expecting your kid to do this and that and the other, but now, you know, that might not be a possibility for you, so now you're upset. The fuck does that even mean? Your kid's gonna do what your kid wants to do. Your kid can have 10 kids or no kids. That doesn't, that has nothing to do with being trans. You can still be transgender and have a kid. And I hate to interrupt your narrative, but your time is up, so if you could wrap up your thought, that would be great. Thank you. This guy said, shut the fuck up and please wrap up because this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Anyways. Yes, so no matter which side of the aisle about LGBTQ you sit on, whether you support the agenda or not, you have to agree that the outcome is devastating. Why the fuck would anybody who supports LGBT agree that the outcome is devastating? I don't think the outcome is devastating. I think it's beautiful. Does this look devastating to you? To have the destruction of a family and my relationship with my only child and to know that our family legacy is dead is a very heavy, heavy burden to carry. Human brains continue to develop well into the 20s. They can be easily influenced by many factors like these types of media that are available in the schools. All right, so anime being available to a younger audience is terrifying because it might influence them to be trans. Be because I did anime make you guys trans? Please let me know. It's so fucking stupid because it's not, there's no link to any of that. Like if this was an actual issue and if it was an ongoing issue, there would be a graph for this. There would be a study for this, like uh, linking modern day books to transgender identity. And it would be like a whole study. There would be a whole graph on it and everything, but there simply is not because that doesn't have anything to do with anything. And I want to reiterate just in closing that we are talking about minor children with HB 17. Um, I heard talk about books about sex trafficking and support of books like that for minors. I find it very disturbing. Uh, books about sex trafficking is different than anime. That we would want to expose minor children to that type of content. Adult content, great, no problem. But to have minors graphically described um, these incidents is just disturbing to me. I taught my son- Ma'am, if you could wrap up, please, just for the sake of time. I taught my son about those topics and I didn't have to use graphic content at all. Thank you. Thank you, any questions from the committee? Okay, thank you very much for being here, we appreciate it. She stormed off so fast. She was so mad. <laughs> you can tell that she's obviously transphobic. She says trans agenda. She says she doesn't agree with it morally or scientifically, whatever the fuck that means. And it's that was probably the dumbest thing 
I've ever heard about turning someone trans and we've reviewed a lot of bad people on this channel so very interesting. Alright well that brings us to the end of the video. I don't really have anything else to say except for stop watching anime because you might become transgender.